do not struggle. What? Who said that? Do not struggle, and you will be free. Relax. Relax. I'm getting free of it. Where are you? I am nearby. Over here. Oh, can you hear me? Uh, I am dying. I'm glad you are safe. No, no, no. I'll help you. What you need is uh, warmth, sunshine. You, I'll, I'll put you in shallow water. It's no use. I'll be right back. better cover up. I must tell my colleagues of your existence. No, please. No other mortal must know of my existence. She's bringing to me. Will you excuse me a moment? Darling, you remember what we were writing you in our letters? Uh, we want to take Jamie back with us after the wedding. He's been accepted at Trinity to be a doctor. That's what he wants, or at least for now. When is enough going to be enough? Maybe never. Set your goals high and far away, and when you reach them, set them higher and higher. Isn't that what you taught me? I am what I am because of you two, and I love you for it. Please don't ask me to change now. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> 
Besides paradise. Bella Glen. Except for me, you are the first person to ever visit it. It is, I think, the most special place on Fantasy Island. Peaceful. Lovely. It was my private world where I could be alone if I chose. Now, now it can be our private world. I thought perhaps we would build our home here, if you like. Oh, I have something else to show you. Oh, it's exquisite. It was first given to Cleopatra in the Golden Hall of the Gods by Caesar himself on a day very much like this, one filled with great celebration. Two thousand noblemen attended the royal party. You make it sound as if you were there. Do I? Well, in any case, it will be your engagement ring, if you like. Of course. Are you sure that you want to marry me? I mean, is it wise? Wise? Well, now, with... Now, more than ever, I am a man who lives to grant fantasies for people. Well, it's time we lived ours, my love. Clinging to each other in the face of the unknown, each bravely giving comfort to the other. Why, Rock? You are an incorrigible romantic. If you mean that I am in love with love, you are quite right. Don't get me wrong. I find love very useful. Without love, there would be no temptation. In my business, I couldn't get along without it. On the contrary, love is the creative energy of the universe. Without it, life would be hell, and you would have won long ago. Someday, someday when all mankind really learns to love, like those two good people, you will finally be destroyed. I am not the one facing destruction here. Your time is almost up. Nothing you have said compels me to release your clients or you. 
You are finally beaten. We both know the rules. You must take exactly what you are entitled to exactly. Not one soul more nor less. Or you relinquish your claim to all of us. I claim all three souls. Three. But I don't see how you can manage that. There are four souls here. Four. How will you take Mrs. Bream without harming the child? What child? Oh, I'm so sorry. You did know Mrs. Bream was pregnant. Did you not? If I remember correctly, you are forbidden to touch the unborn child. So, if you cannot take all, you take nothing. Damn you! Is that not what you have been trying to do? You lose again. You can't take any of us. I warn you, Mephistopheles, no reprisals. The Breams are free of you forever. You hurt my feelings, my dear Rourke. I know the rules. Even my worst detractors must admit that the devil is a damn good sport. Thanks for the game, Rourke. We will play again. We have all eternity before us. And sooner or later, I am bound to win. Mr. Rourke, do come in. Thank you, Miss Simpson. Miss Galloway, forgive me for interrupting, but um, could we talk a bit? Oh, anything to get out of exercising. <laughs> Staying in shape for show business has got me plumb wore out. Yes, I realize you must expend a great deal of energy to achieve certain goals. I just hope you're not using tattoo for the same purpose. Why, Mr. Rourke, are you insinuating that tattoo's infatuated with Donna May? Oh, I think you are already aware of that, Miss Simpson. And I would have no objection if I weren't sure that the two is being manipulated. How dare you, Mr. Rock? How dare you do this to any man, Miss Simpson? Whether you realize it or not, Tattoo's heart is as large and as vulnerable as any man's. And he has the trusting nature of a true innocent. Can you imagine the pain, the hurt he will feel if you have been leading him on? Mr. Rourke, I, I really do like Tattoo. If you value your friendship with Tattoo, you'll see to it that we get that record contract with Colonel Sutton. That sounds like a threat, Miss Simpson. Does it, Mr. Rock? Does it really? 
if you'll excuse me. So you see, your Mr. Rourke is neither the friend nor the gentleman you thought he was. At least he's not behind your back. I don't believe it. Would I say all these things if they weren't true? I mean, would I make this up just to hurt you? I guess not. I really didn't want to tell you at all. It, it's just you've been so nice to me and Donna May. Well, he just don't sound like the boss. Tattoo, can anyone possibly know what Mr. Rourke is thinking or what he'll do at any given time? Can you? Hello, Naya. I called to you from the deepest canyons of the Glass Green Sea. Yet you heard and came to me. You, too, are a remarkable creature, Roy. And a handsome one, too. Such flattery, Naya. Uh, could it be that uh, you want something from me? Well, yes. Uh, let me guess. Um, a fantasy of your own, perhaps. How did you know? Well, it doesn't matter. But since you did bring it up, I would like to learn what love is like. Human love. Well, I don't know if I should help you, Naya. Why? Well, for one thing, you've been luring seamen into the dark waters of eternity for several hundred years with your siren song. It's an understatement to say that uh, with you, love can be dangerous. Perhaps even to yourself. Your human love may threaten foolish mortals. But I am Naya, most royal princess of the kingdom of the Seven Seas. I have nothing to fear. You will give me my fantasy, won't you? Please? We'll see. We'll see. But first, to know human love, one must first be mortal. Yes, yes, my friend. I suspect the pilot saw a castaway drifting helplessly with the current and stopped to pick her up. A, a castaway? Huh? That boss, that's Princess Naya, the mermaid. What is she doing here? She's a customer. You mean she has a fantasy? She has indeed. Her fantasy is to discover the secret of human love. 
Well, she could hardly begin her search confined to the ocean. Boss, her tail is gone. It's only a temporary condition. She has 48 hours to fulfill her fantasy, and then she will go back to the sea and uh, to her tail. Who is that, boss? Mr. Tony Chilton, an airline pilot from Oak Mulgee, Oklahoma. A happily married man with a young daughter, but um, something nags at him. And that's why he's here, right? Precisely. He was born during what many consider to be the last great romantic conflict, World War II. His fantasy is to fly one combat mission with a certain famous fighter group based in the New Zealand area. Mr. Chilton wants to be one of those flying aces, one of the heroes. Boss, that could be very dangerous doing things like that. He could get killed. He could indeed, my friend. Besides, there is a great deal more to his fantasy than meets the eye. My dear guests, I am Mr. Rock, your host. Welcome to Fantasy Island. I, I'm afraid I don't understand, Mr. Rock. Why have you brought me here? This place is falling down. I am sorry, Mr. Hughes. I thought you might have recognized this house from old family photographs. Well, even though time has taken its toll, it is an exact architectural replica of the mansion on Knob Hill built by your great-grandmother, Miss Lily Niles McHenry. Oh. Well, that's different. Did I tell you, Mr. Rourke, that uh, in her will, my grandmother recalled as a young woman she almost starved. That she made a vow to herself, like Scarlett O'Hara, she'd never be poor again. She wanted her family to be well off, too. Unfortunately, the generations that followed failed her. Let's face it, so far I haven't done much better. Um, shall we, Mr. Hughes? must have been a famous salon, a center of culture, refinement, good taste, and my great-grandmother presided over each gathering, queen of all she surveyed. Indeed. Ah, thank you, Tattoo. That brightens the mood. I'm sure your great-grandmother, the illustrious Miss Lily, was a happy person. Mr. Hughes, a brandy, Your Honor. Gentlemen. To wealth and the quality of society it creates. Forgive me for saying this, Mr. Hughes, but you seem to have an almost arrogant pride in your roots. What he means is that some people may think you're a bit of a snob. I have an honest pride in my lineage, gentlemen. If that's snobbery, then so be it. Huh. You know, I can see the assembled company. The servants pouring tea and sherry. The stereoptagon slides on that table. The formal portrait of the hostess on the wall above the fireplace. This is hardly the fantasy I had in mind, Mr. Rourke. Mr. Rourke? Of course you can. Come on, Ducky, we'll show you a good time. Who's a stranger? None of your business, Blaney. Hello, oh, handsome. Hmm? Come and have a drink. Oh. What's your name? I have to be going. I don't belong here. Oh, sure you do, honey lamb. Hey, look at this. Any gentleman as good looking and dapper as yourself belongs at Lily Mac's Pleasure Palace. Now, don't we make a fine looking couple? Oh, my. 
What did you say this place was? <laughs> Honey, this is Lily Max Pleasure Palace. This is the finest port in the house in Knob Hill, San Francisco, U.S. of A. May I present the owner of the establishment? How do you do? Great grandmother. It's my grand grand. You know what? Oh no, no, that's wrong. That couldn't be. She's. It looks like her. I'm. It's a mistake, though. It, it must, or else. It, my God, she was a madam. Yeah, she is. It's a good thing she's out of town too. Why don't you come on and dance with me? Okay. Wait a minute. The dance floor's over there. Yeah, but I think I have to show you a few new movements. No, 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 that's not what I'm here for. I, I'm i looking for roots. I have this fantasy. Oh, honey lamb, I make fantasies come true every day. Mwah. Grand, grand. This is ridiculous. You cannot compromise with the devil. I always thought that compromise was your specialty. No. Well, then it would seem that the only way around our little impasse is for us both to release our claims. Oh. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> hmm? I see what you're trying to do. It won't work. Why? Oh, no, no, it won't work. Why? <laughs> she, she may not be able to go with me, but she can't go with you either. <laughs> uh, w what does that mean, Mr. Work? It means that you will be eternally damned in limbo between his world and mine. Oh, please, you can't, you can't let him do that to me. No. No, I cannot allow that. You win, Mephistopheles. Relinquish your interest in Julie. And you may claim my soul. Done! Mine, Rock. You're finally mine. Oh, no! It's too late for you to talk him out of it. I renounce all claims to you. Rock. Will you escort me personally to Hades? Oh, I have much more imaginative future in mind for you. You will continue to run Fantasy Island, but under my direction, you will pander to all forms of depraved fantasies. Fantasies of evil, fantasies of lust, fantasies of corruption. Your lovely island will become the gateway to hell. A rock. Don't look so gloomy. You will grow to love it. I can see a great future ahead for you in my service. <laughs> Why, with you at my side, there is no limit to the depths that we can plumb. But all this must wait a while. I simply cannot resist making you suffer just a little for all the years of trouble that you've caused me. Wait, uh, excuse me? What is it now? Where are you going with my property? Uh, your property? Uh, I have a document here. It is properly signed and notarized. Oh, yes. Oh, did I forget to mention that I have already sold my soul to her? Oh, I'm terribly sorry. But does that make... Us partners? I still own half of you, Rock. <laughs> Not even half. Poor devil. Midnight has come and gone. 
I'm afraid you failed to claim your half at the appointed time. It's already past midnight. You are too late. The letter of the law. Remember? Damn you, Rock. That is precisely what I have been trying to avoid. I beg your pardon, Walk. I concede the battle, but our eternal war goes on. You said it yourself, Rock. One cannot always win, but the law of averages are on my side. We shall do battle again. My final victory is inevitable. Oh, Mr. Rourke, meeting Heathcliff or someone like him has been my dream since I was 13 years old. <sighs> Still doesn't seem possible that it's really going to happen at last. And you think that meeting Heathcliff, perhaps experiencing the kind of love he had for Cathy in the novel, will free you of your fixation so you may find real love, huh? Yes. That true? Wuthering Heights, Miss Bevis. I must warn you, your actions must not change Miss Bronte's classic book in any way, including including its conclusion. I understand. Then walk, Miss Bevis, down that pathway. Where does it go? Why, to Wuthering Heights, of course, in the year 1830. Wuthering Heights, and I'm really here. And there is Heathcliff. <gasps> if you value your pitiful life, Lenton, you'll get off my property. I have remained silent these two months since my wife Kathy's death, out of respect for her memory. Now may I remind you, Heathcliff, this is my wife's rightful property. It is therefore now mine. I'll see you in hell before I give up weathering heights to the likes of you. I warn you, Heathcliff. I intend to have my rightful property one way or another. Weathering heights is no more your property, sir, than your wife was. <laughs> Pay for this Heathcliff. I swear it. How can it be? Kathy. Kathy. <sighs> Mr. Rock. Mr. Garn. Oh, that's just a little surprise. I thought I might add a little excitement to our contest. These spiders are very rare breed. 
They're from Lycosa family, imported from Tunisia. One bite means almost instantaneous death. Excitement, Mr. Picard. But the rules are simple. If you feel you're losing the contest, say yield. But say it before your hand touches the spider. Now, if you don't wish to compete, you don't have to. You can yield right now. I have no intention of forfeiting, Mr. Picard. Give it up, Mr. Picard. No! You can't win. I will. Yield. I yield. is even. Boss, you had him beaten. Yes, that's all. And when you think about it, that's enough to know, isn't it? Considered, I would think you could put in a good word for me. Bertrand, I'm sorry. They've written you out of the show. It's out of my hands. You look tired. I am. I couldn't sleep last night. I'm sorry to hear that. You have a very tough day ahead of you. You are coming back to work. Jeff, I can't. I simply can't. Yes, you can. You'll be there, Gina. We run any further behind on. I'll shoot something else until three o'clock. You be on the set at three. You be there ready for work. If you're not, I call the producers, and I am quite sure they will call the attorneys. Concern where you were all day yesterday by any chance? No, I'm gonna be in a soap opera. And furthermore, I've got two lines. Two lines? Yes, and they're gonna shoot my scene next. Is that all right, boss? Is it? You have a great deal to do around here, Tattoo. But nothing that can't wait another day. Oh, boss, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, boss. Ha <laughs> 
Miss Edwards. Is everything all right? Get away from me. You promised me you would help me. She's going to kill Jeff. Is she? Well, I don't intend to stand by and let that happen. I'm leaving this island right away. Miss Edwards, that would be a tragic mistake. I believe the only reason you've been able to keep Andrea at bay so far is because of your love for your husband. If you deny that love now by running away or even thinking about I've it... I've had it with your theories, Mr. Rourke. Goodbye. Thanks, anyway. Dan, I don't know anything about you. Who you are, where you're from. I'm from a small town out west, and, hmm. uh... I'm not much of anybody, really. Let's talk about you. Oh, I'm not much of anybody either. <laughs> Carol, darling, I'm not gonna let Jeremy Todd get away with this. Dan. I'll be back. I'm gonna get you back your song. suitcase down, sweetheart. Where you're going, you won't need it. You won't need anything. Stay away from me. Thanks for not listening to Mr. Rourke. You've made it so much easier for me. No, I won't let you hurt Jeff. Goodbye, Goodbye. Jeannie. I wanted to say good night, Mrs. Wilson. Thank you, Patty. Carol, my darling. Happy anniversary, John. This is our dance. I love you, Carol. I always will. I know. It was the strength of your love that brought me here. But why are you looking so unhappy? Because of Martha. Martha? Oh, yes. She's a lovely person. You know, you always had such exuberance for life. That's what made me so happy all those years we spent together. 
I think it would be a shame to lose that gift, hmm? What are you saying? Oh, John, if it had been you, wouldn't you have wanted me to go on living, being happy? Oh, yes, of course. I... You see, darling, I want the same thing for you. Until yesterday, Martha had lost all hope, joy. But you're giving that back to her, giving her a reason to live again. She needs you. You need her. Go to her. You and I can wait until later. I love you. I love you, Carol. Always, always. I love you, too. Forever. Be happy. Goodbye, my darling. Your fantasy is over, Mr. Cook. Richard! Wait! Wait! Christopher, listen to me. You are part, and I can see that now. If you let me go... You had your chance. But you said it yourself, you need someone to share your life. You can sacrifice anyone, Lewis, but I can appreciate you. I can love you. Come closer, Lewis. Come closer to me. Let me prove it to you.
I have the power here. I command you to kill her. Kill her! No. No! No, she's lying! She's lying! No! No! What does one do with a thousand-year-old child? Give her her fantasy, Rourke, and she will first give you ecstasy beyond imagination. Well? I'm sorry, Naya. When I kissed you, you felt nothing. Oh, I felt a great deal. I felt a deep green sea closing about me and the cold tentacles of seaweed pulling me down into dark, icy depths. If you were the gentleman you pretend to be, Rourke, you'd forget about my past. Naya, Naya, why don't you go back to the sea, go back to your own realm and be content? Content? You mean bored, bored, bored? You refuse my fantasy again. Then that does it. Now you're really in for it. Where's Mr. Rourke? Sir, wait a minute, sir. Just one minute, sir. It's all right, Lawrence. It's all right. Something troubling you, Mr. Robinson? I came here to get away from that, that, that thing that's trying to take over my job, and now it's here. The computer is here. Yes, but you haven't been replaced yet, and your stay on Fantasy Island has just begun. Mr. Rourke, if I lose my job, I may not be able to afford to stay on Fantasy Island. And now it looks like I'm going to have to cozy up to that machine in Charlene Hunt in order to keep it. A man's life adds up to more than the sum of the tasks he performs. But I really like my work, and I've helped people, too. Yes. And you have a loyal and very able assistant in Miss Martin. Why don't you, as they say, put your head together with hers, Mr. Robinson, at once? Why didn't I think of that? Yeah. Put our heads together. <laughs> I think you need protection there, beautiful. Don't be ridiculous. Beautiful? Are you attracted to me? Well, let's put it this way. If you had a hoop, I'd jump through it, you know what I mean? Hoop? I have no time for stupid games. I am Naya, Princess of the Seven Seas. Yeah, well, I'm Sam, your alternative to the average Jack. I like your style, Princess. Good. Then it's settled. You and I will become lovers. Well, uh, your plays are mine. Mine, of course. Oh. I'm sorry. I've been around a while, you know, but I have never met a woman like you before. <laughs> of course not, or you wouldn't still be here. No. Is that a promise or a threat? Kiss me.
Ah, oh, Mr. and Mrs. Palmer. Come in, please. Come in. Right on time. Lawrence? Lawrence, will you please? Oh, yes, sir. Mr. Rook, all my life I've wanted this fantasy. Oh, I know. Thank you, Lawrence. It is said that uh, this once belonged to uh, Dick Turpin. It could stand you in good stead, sir. This belonged to Dick Turpin. Now, have you ready? I've never been so ready for anything in all my life. Good. This way, please. <laughs> she go? Have no fear, Mr. Palmer. You will see your wife again very soon. However, she won't recognize you. You mean she's part of my fantasy? Do you suggest your wife stay behind during all this? But uh, Of course, I can cancel your fantasy. No, no. But it'll be all right, though, won't it? Uh, there will be certain uh, complications in your relationship, which you will soon discover. Now, concentrate on the poem. You were quoting earlier, Mr. Palmer. Concentrate on the highwayman. He'd a French cocked hat on his forehead. And a bunch of lace at his chin. Coat of claret velvet. And breeches brown doe skin. Now, off to your adventure. Dick Turpin, kill him! 